One of my favorite movies growing up was Mean Girls. The excitement and, dra and drama drew me in immediately. I thought, wow, is high school really like this? Will I be the leader of a hot group of friends? On every Wednesday, will I have to wear pink? Will I be able to wear my pair of really expensive white gold hoops I got for Hanukkah? You know, the questions that a real boy asks himself. <laughs> All jokes aside, it brought up an interesting, an interesting question. What makes someone so popular? Well, I came up with three factors. Gender roles, involvement, and assertiveness, which can all be summed up in the name Gia. Now, we all know a Gia. She's popular, she's pretty, and everyone likes her. And I wanted to figure out how I can become Gia. So first, let's start off with G, gender roles. Gender roles is probably one of the biggest factors that go into being popular. This goes for both boys and girls. For girls, it's the ones who are seen as more feminine. The girls who wear the dresses, have the heels, have the makeup, the lashes, the white gold hoops. It's a visual aspect. Therefore, if you're not the most assertive person or if you're not in most clubs, it's all right because you look pretty. For boys, on the other hand, it's those who are seen as masculine. The boys who play sports, boys who wear the basketball shorts and the tank tops. They're seen as stronger, more athletic, and therefore get noticed more. If a boy is seen as more feminine, or in another term, more gay, they're not seen as more popular because they're seen as weak and not dominant. These gender roles, unfortunately, are things that society put on us and we can't really change. But what we can change, or decide to do, is what clubs we're in. And this goes on to my next. That's gender roles, I forgot. As I said, makeup and sports. Involvement, I and Gia. People who are involved are more likely to make connections with others. It's very important in high school because the more clubs you're in, the more likely you're to meet other people from different grades. For example, I'm in student council, so I get to know, I get to know the freshman class, I get to know the sophomore class, I get to know the junior class, and I get to know the senior class. Not only do I get to make connection with those people, but when I'm talking to people outside student council in those classes, I can make connections with the people who are in student council, and we have um, mutual friends. If a student is in a club and has a leader, leadership position, this is an added bonus. When a person or a student has uh, the title of president or vice president or secretary, they're automatically raised at a higher pedestal and seen as more responsible and more powerful than other students. With power also comes assertiveness. Assertiveness can go one of two ways. You can be assertive in the way that you're confident and outspoken, the good assertiveness. Or you can be a little more extreme assertiveness, which goes into aggressive. These people are seen as the mean girls of school. Assertiveness, as I have found, is surprisingly important in being popular. When surveying people, I asked to think of the most popular person you know. And when I asked that, I said, now, are they assertive, kind of assertive, or not very assertive? I have found that most people said that they were assertive across the board for both the popular boy and the popular girl. People who are assertive are just shown to have more confident and just seen as more of a powerful, outspoken person. On the other hand, there is aggressiveness. And this method is just as effective, but it's probably not the best way to go about being popular. When you are mean to other students, two things will happen to you. One, people will start to talk about you and tell other people about how mean you are. This isn't the best way to gain good popularity, but people are still talking about you. And no publicity is bad publicity. <laughs> or people are going to be afraid of you and subsequently want to be your friend. Uh, a good example for this was when I was in middle school. I had this friend and she was a very mean girl and she was not nice to anyone. And I found out that the more mean she was to me, the more I wanted to be her friend because I'd rather be with a popular group and go through all that torture than be outside of the group and have her attack me even more and not have the safety of being in that group. Girls are usually the one to take this route of aggressive popularity, as some of you may know. Girls who are the gossipers are usually seen as being cooler. The, the girls 
who hear this gossip are drawn towards the gossiper because they are clearly presenting what they feel and have no filter at all. This shows confidence and power over others. Um, <clears throat> if a, mm, uh, assertiveness is also a big factor on the male spectrum, except males are a little bit more different than girls. Males, as I have seen, are more visual creatures, and when they are presenting aggressiveness or assertiveness, they do it in a different way than gossiping. They will usually try to um, outman the other boys by you know, lifting weights or just looking stronger, being better at sports. The more masculine and assertive the boy is, the more they're seen as an alpha. <clears throat> All these important factors come together to form popularity, which is <laughs> which is Gia. That leads me to Gia. Gender roles, involvement, and assertiveness. When thinking about popularity, the thing to know is to not change yourself to make yourself more likable, but to be yourself so people will like you for you. Gia is a girl that we can all become, but that doesn't mean we should. If you want to seem more confident around your workplace or school, Gia will definitely help you. Just remember, it's okay to be friends with Gia, but just don't obsess over her and become someone you're not. Thank you very much. Do you ever just cry? <laughs>